I'm just thankful for this time that we're able to gather here and thankful for um, this time that I'm able to preach online. Um, it's kind of unusual here because normally I think you know many of you who've seen me preach at Lighthouse Baptist Church. Um, you know, I sometimes like to, you know, move out of the way and out of the camera. And so um, I can't, I'm not able to do that. I'm kind of stuck here. I feel like I'm in prison, but I'll try my best um, to uh, stay here. Uh, we're going to be looking at the book of Hosea. We're going to start in the book of Hosea. Um, and then we're going to move on to some other passages. Hosea chapter number six. Hosea chapter number six. And we're going to be looking at verse number three, um, starting off. Hosea chapter six. The title of my message is, We Need Rain Too. All right, for those of you who aren't taking notes, we need rain too. All right, I don't know if you've ever been um, anticipating rain. I don't know if you've ever been, um, you know, expecting rain. Uh, rain is a good thing. And I remember on, on several occasions um, standing here in Guingua, you know, here, either here or, you know, at my house, and you'd see a rain cloud over in the distance. And there's looks like there's a lot of rain over there. And, you know, you're really expectant. And, you know, that rain looks like it's going to come over here. We need rain. It's dry. And then the rain starts moving away. And it starts, it doesn't rain on you. It doesn't rain on your place. It doesn't rain where you live. And it's kind of disappointing, okay, for me. And I'm sure it's disappointing for many of you, those of you who have, um, you know, shambas you, you plant and you're expecting on rain. You're counting on that rain um, to be able to provide for your crops. And when the rain doesn't come, you know, you're kind of disappointed. You're kind of like, you know, I wish we had had rain too. You know, rain is good. Um, we expect rain. We need rain, okay? Rain is good, okay? And so um, I want to preach on rain tonight because um, rain is just as important in the spiritual realm as it is in the physical, okay? Just as you need rain to plant, to help your shamba grow and all those other things, you need rain in the spiritual realm realm okay and did you know that uh spiritual rain is just as real spiritual rain is just as real as um normal rain um one of the pictures that god gives in um the bible is rain um and it, he pictures revival and he pictures the coming of the holy ghost in revival um as rain if you look at hosea chapter 6 and verse number 3 hosea chapter 6 and verse number 3 um it says uh, then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto us as the latter rain, as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. OK, so here's talking about God and it says God is going to come to us. All right. If we seek to know the Lord, if we follow on to know the Lord. God will come to us as the rain. So God's picturing himself, the Holy Ghost, as rain. Now turn over to Hosea chapter number 10. Hosea chapter number 10. And in the same book, I, um, Hosea, the prophet Hosea, um, speaking to the children of Israel in the Old Testament times, he uses this picture of rain again. And um, Hosea chapter 10 and verse number 12 Hosea chapter 10 and verse number 12 says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground. You know, when it's time to plant, you know, you break up the fallow ground, you plow. Okay, why? Because it is, and here it's talking spiritually. It says, why is it, it is time to seek the Lord. It is time to seek the Lord. Until when? Until he come and rain righteousness upon you. All right, there's that picture of rain again, okay? And we're, there are several other references that I'm going to give you. You can write them down if you wish. Um, Psalm chapter 72 and verse number 6. Psalm chapter 72 and verse number 6 also talks about the Lord as being like rain. And then also um, Isaiah chapter 44 and verse number 3. Um, and you can look these up in your, in your own spare time. We're not going to look at all of these verses right now. But Isaiah chapter 44 and verse number 3, and then Acts chapter 2 and verse number 17, the day of Pentecost, is compared to rain, all right? God uses um, the physical world, all right? He's, God is very wise. And God is so wise that he put these pictures in the physical world all around us to 
picture spiritual truth, okay? Like in the day of Pentecost, he talks about the spirit um, compared to wind. Um, he talks about the spirit being compared to fire, all right? And then he talks about the spirit coming as water, filling us, and also as rain, you know, being poured upon us, okay? So there's this picture of rain that you find in the Bible, okay? But what are some facts about rain, all right? Natural rain, physical rain that we see all around us, okay, frequently. What are some facts about rain that are applicable to the Holy Ghost and to revival? What are some thoughts about rain that, you know, you can take those principles from natural rain and apply them to spiritual rain? That's what I want to look at tonight. I want us to look at just three things. There's several things that we could talk about. But um, first, we're going to look at um, how rain is necessary. And then secondly, rain is frequent. And then thirdly, rain is is sent okay so rain is necessary okay rain is very necessary we all know that okay um physical rain is necessary if you plant your shamba physical rain helps the seed uh to grow um you go out into your shamba you plant seeds and you're expecting rain uh to grow okay if it were not for rain there would be very little fruit okay if you're not if it were not for rain if there was no rain there's just dew or just a little bit of rain um there will be very little fruit um up in, in the shambas you would get a very small crop okay rain produces fruit naturally rain produces fruit okay and that's why it's so necessary I, um recently we've had a lot of rain um especially in the month of january and february uh, many of you know there was a lot of rain in this these past um, months and because of that rain um we'd go out to gatukuyu and all around the, if you've ever been to gatukuyu the market is like a big square and all around um, the marketplace, all around the area, there are these pro boxes. And all e there are these several pro boxes all around the market. Sometimes they would block the road so you can't get past them. Um, you tell them to move, they start shouting at you. But um, anyways, um, all these pro boxes were parked around the market and they were just full of mangoes, okay? They were just full of mangoes. And I think um, one of the main reasons that there were just so many mangoes in Gatukuyu, um, and I'm sure there were mangoes everywhere else. You could find mangoes in many places. One of the reasons there was so much fruit at that time was because there was so much rain during that January, that February, that rainy season that continued, okay? Rain produces um, fruit. Rain produces uh, stronger plants. Um, I was talking to a man in Gatukuyu and he was telling us that uh, the, the napier grass, the grass that you give to, uh, to cattle, um, he's telling us that the grass is so tall and the grass is so strong, it's so tough uh, that you can't give it to cattle anymore, only the top shoots. But um, the grass is very strong, the plants are very strong. Why? Because we had so much rain. We had so much rain. The rain makes the plants strong. The rain makes the plants um, you know, firm, uh, tough not easily, you know, blown away, not easily broken, okay? And that's physical rain. But if we take that and we apply it to spiritual rain, the Holy Ghost shower, revival, is needed to produce uh, fruit in our lives, okay? The Word of God is planted, okay? If you look in Luke chapter number 8 and verse number 11, Jesus talks about the parable of the sower, and he says the seed is the Word of God, okay? The Word of God, this Word of God, Every word in this book is like seed, especially the gospel, okay? And you plant a seed. The preacher gets up and he plants a seed. A person goes out, he witnesses, he passes out tracts. That's planting a seed. Did you know that we need revival in order to see that seed that is planted bear fruit? We need to see revival in order to see that seed is planted, that is planted that will bear fruit, okay? Without rain, much seed will be planted, not much fruit. Much seed will be, many sermons will be preached, not much, many people saved. Without revival, many tracts will be given out, thousands of tracts will be given out, and only a few people saved. We need the rain. We need thousands of sermons saved, only one or two, three souls being baptized every year, one shower, but what, but what, let me tell you this, one shower of the Holy Ghost, one shower of blessing, revival comes, one outpouring of the Spirit and the Word of God will bear fruit very quickly. 
will bear fruit very quickly. What kind of fruit? Um, we just read in Galatians chapter number 5 and verse number 22 and 23. talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Okay? The fruit of the Spirit. That's one of the fruits that will come in abundance. Not just a little bit of love, not just a little bit of joy, but great joy. Joy unspeakable. Peace that passes all understanding. When revival comes, when the Holy Spirit is outpouring. Hosea chapter 10 and verse number 12 talks about the fruit of righteousness. Okay? Till he come and rain righteousness upon you. That's another fruit. And I think the fruit of righteousness is mentioned in another place in the Bible. Okay? Hosea chapter 10 and verse number 12 talks about righteousness being, being produced in abundance as a result of the Holy Ghost coming upon us in revival. And then soul winning. Proverbs chapter number 11 and verse number 30, um, it talks about um, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is, wife, is wise. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse number 30, okay? Um, you think about the day of Pentecost, okay? Um, Acts chapter 2. And it's amazing to me, you read the, day of, uh, the sermon on the Pentecost, day of Pentecost, it was only about 15 minutes. Um, 15, 20 minutes, some people estimate. It wasn't a long sermon. And yet in that one day, it produced a fruit, a crop, a harvest of 3,000 people. 3,000 people. Why? Because the Holy Ghost was poured upon them. And they had that shower of blessing. And they saw revival in that day. And they saw great works of God. Rain creates that fruit. Rain helps the seed that Peter, rain helped the seed that Peter planted, the word of God to bear fruit in abundance. Rain is beneficial and rain is very necessary. It's very necessary if we are going to see all the, our labors produce fruit as God would have us, okay? So rain is necessary. Secondly, we see rain is uh, frequent. Um, turn to Psalm chapter uh, 72. Uh, Psalm chapter 72. Rain is frequent. Psalm chapter 72, verse number 6. And I believe it's talking about the Lord here. It says in verse number 6 of Psalm chapter 72, it says, He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as showers that waters the water the earth. And I want us to notice that one word showers because it's plural. It's not just one shower. It has to be um, multiple showers, okay? And uh, we talk, we sang that song, Showers of Blessing. Daniel led that song in just, uh, just a few minutes ago. Showers of Blessing, okay? Um, do any of you know where that, that phrase, Showers of Blessing, comes from? It comes from Ezekiel chapter number 34 and verse number 26. Ezekiel chapter number 20, uh, 34, verse 26, talks about showers. There shall be showers of blessing, okay? And in both these places, it uses that word showers, pl plural. There has to be multiple outpourings, okay? Um, if you think about it in the physical, the natural rain, normal rain, okay? And I want you to imagine with me, okay? I want you to imagine and to suppose with me that on December 12th, uh, 1963, um, of course, you all know that that is the day of Kenya's independence, um, Jamhuri Day, uh, the day that Kenya received its independence, the, birth, the first day of Kenya. Let's suppose on that day there was a massive rainstorm that covered all of Kenya. Let's suppose that that day there was rain in abundance, it rained all day, and there was a great crop, there was a great harvest. Plenty of rain, people had food, people had maize, they had millet, they had, um, you know, whatever other crops, tomatoes and fruit, mangoes, bananas. Let's suppose to be those people, they all received a great harvest because of that one shower on that one day, Jamhuri Day, the first Jamhuri Day, okay? Now I want you to imagine, imagine with me if that was the only time it rained in Kenya. That day, from that day until now, I think it's like been 50 years, okay? Would Kenya be a dry place? Would Kenya be a dry, barren place? Would it be a desert? It would be a thirsty land? Of Definitely. It would be so dry, you wouldn't have people living, people would die, 
okay? You'd be barren. There would be no fruit, okay? Let me ask you this. If the, the harvest that those people received on that day, would that food be enough to feed us today? No, it would not. It would not be enough, okay? Rain must come frequently if it is to do us any good. Rain must come frequently if it is to do us any good, okay? It must come abundantly, okay? I don't know if you've been to places like Garissa or Wajir and Lodwa, Lodwar and Mandera. These places, I looked it up, these get like six inches of rain a year. That's it, the whole year. And if you visit those areas, they get a little bit of rain, maybe a few sprinkles, but it's not enough to do anything, very dry, very barren land, no life, no wildlife, all right? Very, no fruit, no animals, a lot of death and not much life, okay? And then you travel to areas like our place where we receive more rain, a little bit more rain than they do up there in those dry areas. And you find that there's more fruit and there's more animals, okay? And there is life. But then you go to a place like, to, uh, like we say, like, um, like the Congo, the rainforest, um, where there, it rains almost every day, where rain comes frequently, day after day after day after day. And what is there? There's life. There's plants. There's bugs. There's trees. There's animals. Life in abundance. No death. Life plentifully. Why? Because there's rain frequently. Because it rains there frequently, repeatedly, abundantly. Okay, and I gave that example of, you know, the rain coming only on the December on December 12th, because there are Christians who actually believe that the spirit because the spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost. Okay, let's turn to that passage, Acts chapter number two, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Acts chapter number two. Acts chapter number two and verse number four. Acts chapter two and number, verse number four. And it says, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. All of them. They had been praying for 10 days. They were all filled. They had that shower. And then in verse number 16, um, Peter says, you know, these guys are not drunk. He said, these people have had experience what uh, the prophet Joel said, verse number 17, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaids will I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And God's talk he's talking about revival here. He's talking about an Old Testament promise that came to pass in that day. And there are many Christians who believe, you know, this only happened on Pentecost. It's only happened on that day, the first day of the church. But if it only happened on the first day of the church, and it never happened until uh, from then until now, we would be a very dry place. We would be in a very de desert place. We would be lacking in love, lacking in fruit, lacking in life full of death. Rain must be frequent. Spiritual rain must be frequent, okay? God said that he would rain the Holy Ghost down on his people in the last days, plural, multiple days, day after day. He wants to pour it out every day, I believe, okay? And he says, I will pour out his spirit upon the last days, plural, okay? If you turn to verse uh, to Acts chapter 4 and verse 31, It says in Acts 2, verse 4, it says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 31, they received another shower. They received another rain. They didn't think it was a one-time thing. Acts chapter 4 and verse 31, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken to where, shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, the same language as in Acts chapter 2 and verse number 4. They received a second blessing. And then we go on and read, and there were other blessings. They kept on receiving showers and showers and showers, revival after revival and for the revival. And that's why the book of Acts is so full of fruit. Thousands of people getting saved, 
Okay, uh, in Acts chapter number uh, four, it talks about 5,000 people getting saved in one time. All right, and you see the gospel going everywhere. Fruit was being produced. There was life in the church. Why? Because God continued to pour out that rain continually, repeatedly. Acts chapter eight in, verse, in Samaria, the people believed, they were baptized, and then Peter and John came down and they made sure that they received a shower of the Holy Ghost and they had revival. Acts chapter 10 at Cornelius' house. You see that Cornelius prayed and as soon as Peter started preaching, they were all saved and they received a shower at the same time. Acts chapter 19, the apostle Paul asked the believers, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And these were disciples, okay? Acts chapter 19, it says they were disciples. He asked them, since you believed, they were believers. They had enough of the Holy Ghost to believe, but they had not received the shower. And Paul noticed that. And he said, have you received the Holy Ghost? Have you had a revival? He said, we don't know. And so Paul prayed for them and they received a shower. And if you look at church history, shower after shower came when the church was dry, when the church was lifeless, when people were backsliding away, when people were not enjoying the love of God, when people were not rejoicing in church, it was just going through the motions. People in the church sought for God to rain revival down upon them. Many Christians today are dry. Yes, they are saved. Yes, they believe the Bible. Yes, they have a time of prayer in the morning. They go to church. They live good lives. But there's very little fruit. There's little fruit. Pass out thousands of tracts. Very few people respond. Only see one or two people baptized every year. And I don't think that's God's plan. I think God wants us to have thousands of people being saved. As we see in the book of Acts. The book of Acts is a model church. And just as they receive shower after shower and shower, we need showers. We need fruit. Okay? We need rain. Maybe you personally are feeling dry in your life right now. Maybe you personally are feeling that, you know, you read your Bible and you're not getting anything. You're not receiving a blessing. Maybe you feel that you preach and nobody, you're those of you who are preachers, maybe you feel that, you know, you preach and nobody responds. Maybe you feel that you give out thousands of tracts and there are very few people respond. Maybe you feel dry. God wants to rain on your life, okay? Um, an a Irish preacher from uh, Northern Ireland, um, he said, um, when, and of course, when God starts to operate a revival, people cannot sleep, okay? I, I believe one of the biggest um, signs of dryness in the church is people sleeping during the sermon, okay? People sleeping during the sermon. He says, when the Spirit of God starts to operate a revival, people cannot sleep. You cannot sleep. In church, when the Spirit of God awakes the people, we need rain. We need showers. We need showers upon us. Not just do, not just manunu, okay? Just a few showers, just a few sprinkles. The song talks about mercy drops. A few drops here, a few drops here. We need showers. And you need showers abundantly. And we need showers frequently. We need showers regularly. Rain is necessary. Rain is frequent. And then finally, uh, rain is sent. Rain is sent. Zechariah chapter 10. Back to the Old Testament again. Zechariah chapter 10 and verse number 1, the very first verse of Zechariah chapter number 10. It says, Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter, latter rain. Now let me ask you, what do all good Kenyans do? when they've noticed that there's no, been no rain for a long time, they all gather into church. And the number one testimony in the prayer meeting, preacher, pray for rain. We need rain. We need rain. Why? People understand that in the physical realm, okay, in the physical realm, rain comes from God. Rain comes from God and from God alone, okay? When God told Noah to build an ark, he said, I will send rain, okay? 
In fact, the Bible says the windows were of heaven were open. Okay, God is the one that shuts up heaven, that there be no rain. God is in control of the rain. God um, closes um, the heavens. He told the children of Israel that he had the power to make heaven like brass, like metal, so that there would be no rain. If you remember Elijah, turn to James chapter 5. James chapter 5 talks tells us about Elijah. It's very interesting, this story, because Elijah understands who is in control of the rain. James chapter number 5 and verse number um, 17 and 18. A story about rain. It says, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. Okay, so he was just a normal human being. He wasn't a super saint. He wasn't a super Christian. He wasn't a super believer. He was subject to like passions as we are. He went through the same temptations. And he prayed earnestly. There's the prayer. He prayed earnestly, why? That it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. All right? Elijah saw the people sinning. And Elijah saw it was still raining. And he said, God, we need you to punish these people because it's still raining. And he pleaded and he prayed and he got down on his knees and he prayed and he prayed and he asked God, stop the rain. And God answered his prayer. God heard his prayer. God answered his prayer. It didn't rain for three years and six months. Then in verse number 18, and he prayed again. And if you want to read this story, look at 1 Kings chapter number 18. I think it's first Kings. First Kings chapter number 18 gives the story about how Elijah prayed again, all right, with his head between his knees. And he begged God, give us rain again. The people have turned back to you. Give us rain. And the heaven gave rain, all right? And the earth got brought forth her fruit, all right? There's the connection between rain and fruit again, okay? Said Elijah said, went to God and he said, God, we need you to reign. Why? Because God was in control of the rain. Elijah was in control of the rain. Elijah couldn't say, you know, rain, and it would rain. Elijah could not say stop, and it would stop. Okay? He had no control over the rain, but he knew the person who did have control over the rain. And he said, God, send us rain. Okay? And Elijah didn't have to wonder if God heard his prayers. It's a very stunning thing to me. When it rained, everyone knew. Everybody knew that it had rained. Elijah knew that it rained. His servant knew that it was rained. Even the unbelievers knew that it was rained. Ahab knew that it had rained. Jezebel knew that it had rained. All right? Revival effect and the rain affects everyone. Okay? And so Elijah prayed for rain, physical rain. What about us? Are we going to pray for spiritual rain? He asked, how can, I, how can I receive spiritual rain? My life is dry. How can I receive spiritual rain? Or maybe you see your church is dry. You say, we need rain in our church. We need rain in our town. Our town is a wicked town. We need God to rain righteousness upon us. How can we access that rain? How can we get rain for this country of Kenya where we live? We have no control over the Holy Ghost. We have no control over the Holy Ghost or the rain, the spiritual rain. We have no control over revival. But we can pray for God to give us rain. We can pray for God to give us rain. Okay? We must pray. We must pray for spiritual rain. Hosea chapter 10 and verse number 12. All right, the verse that we've been repeating often and often, it says, it says, it's time to seek the Lord. That's what Elijah did. He sought the Lord. It's time to seek the Lord until he come and rain righteousness on you. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse number three talks about rain again. It says, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. There's that dryness again. He said, God said, I will pour floods upon the dry ground. And then he tells us what he's referring to by the floods. He says, I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and by my blessing upon thine offspring. Okay? You must pray for rain. 
spiritual reign. Must pray for a revival, all right? The apostles, they prayed for 10 days, or 10, all right? 10 days. And, the, and in Acts chapter 2, the Spirit came upon them. It rained, and there was fruit. They prayed again in Acts chapter 4 and verse 31, and they had another shower. They had another revival, okay? Peter and John prayed for Samaria. They had a shower, okay? Cornelius fasted and prayed, right? We don't know how long he did that, but he fasted and prayed, and God said, your prayers are answered, and he received a shower, okay? If you look at church history, all right, people prayed for the Spirit to be poured upon them in abundance, and the result was rain after rain after rain, okay? And I think of the last rain that we had in this country of Kenya. If you read revival history, you find that the last spiritual rain that Kenya had was in 19... Uh, in the 1930s up to the 1960s, uh, known as the East African Revival. And Pastor Halstead has taught about that a lot, okay? But that was the last time I believe Kenya received a spiritual rain. And it's been, it's been over 50, 60 years since we received spiritual rain. And let me tell you, we cannot prosper. We cannot live the Christian life. We cannot have a New Testament church without the rain without the Holy Ghost coming upon us, without the showers of blessing. We cannot have it, okay? A church is not a New Testament church unless it receives showers from the Holy Ghost, revival. Let me ask you this, has Lighthouse Baptist Church ever had experience, uh, experienced spiritual rain? Has our church ever had spiritual rain? Ask yourself that question. Rain is supposed to be normal, okay? Rain is supposed to be, you know, regular. The church in Acts had regular outpourings. Rain is supposed to be normal. And rain is possible. Rain is possible, okay? If you, God's people, will pray for rain. If you who are God's people will pray for rain. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 14. It says, if my people, and we are God's people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. God has the power. God has the desire to pour out his spirit again and again and again and again and again in revival. God wants to do that. God wants to give us showers of blessing. Okay? He's just waiting for his people to pray. He's just waiting for his people to pray. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall the Heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? We must ask. We must ask. That's in Luke 11, chapter, uh, chapter 11, verse number 13. When we pray, God will answer. When we pray, God will answer. When we seek God for revival, God will answer. I'm confident of that. It's up to us to ask, all right? And everyone will know when it rains, okay? Ahab and Jezebel, the most wicked people in Israel, knew when it rained, okay? When it rains on Lighthouse Baptist Church, all right? When, it rain, when, when the Spirit comes and revival comes to Lighthouse Baptist Church, my prayer and my desire and my belief is that everyone in Thika will know. The worst drunkards, the worst prostitutes, they will all know that re revival has come to Lighthouse Baptist Church. When God sends rain, when God sends revival to Trinity Baptist Church there in Gatakuyu, everyone will know. Okay? It won't be a secret. And it will affect people. Many will be brought to Christ. There will be fruit. There will be abundance. Pray for rain. Pray for rain, okay? We could make many other comparisons. We could be, make some other comparisons about rain and revival, but these are enough. Now, I trust God has given you that desire to pray for rain and to seek God for revival. And if you are praying for revival, if you are play, praying for God to work in your life and for God to revive you and for God to pour out his spirit and to give you a shower of blessing, don't give up. Don't stop. Keep praying. Keep praying.
God will answer his prayer. My question for you this evening, will you pray for rain? Will you pray for rain? Will you pray? Will you seek God? It's time to seek the Lord, says Hosea. Will you seek God? Will you prepare yourself for the rains to come? Will you break up your fallow ground? Are you ready for the revival that is coming? Ask yourself, are you ready? And pray for rain so that we might see fruit in our church and in our own lives and in the lives of those around us. Rain is essential. Rain is necessary. Rain is frequent. Rain is sent from God. Let's God ask God to give us rain. Father, we thank you for this time that we're able to gather together. And I thank you for the promises of your word, especially the promise of Isaiah that says, I will pour water on him that is thirsty. And I will pour out my spirit upon thy sea. And Lord, we need that. Lighthouse Baptist Church needs a fresh shower of the Holy Ghost, a fresh shower of the blessings of God, a fresh shower. And Lord, we ask that you would give that to us. We pray that you would give us showers of blessing. We pray that you would not just give us mercy drops. I pray that you would not just make us satisfied with the way we are. Help us to seek you, Lord. Help us to ask. Help us to pray. And help us to believe you that you will send the rain. Lord, we thank you for the rain. We thank you for what you have done. And we pray that you would do even more. Lord, send rain to this country. Send rain to this town. Send rain to Gachikuyu. Lord, I pray that the rain would come and that we would see great blessings, a great harvest of souls, a great harvest of righteousness because of your reign. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.